welcome to the session so in this particular session we'll talk about asymptotic notation okay so the concept that we want to discuss here is asymptotic notation now when this concept is coming into picture when this concept is coming into picture now we have any problem statement so any problem statement is given to us for a given problem statement we do have multiple solutions right solution s1 solution s2 and solution s3 how we can compare these three solutions what are the important parameters in algorithms with the help of which we will be able to compare that okay s1 solution is far better than s2 or in other words s2 solution is far better than s1 and s3 what are those parameters which are defining that okay uh, these are the comparisons that we have so that's where this notations are coming into picture usually we have for any code or algorithm that you have written three scenarios that we usually deal one is called as the worst case scenario right and in worst case scenario in algorithms we represent that in terms of big o second thing second scenario is something which we say as the best case scenario right best case scenario is something which is represented with the help of something called as omega and the third one is something which we say as the average case scenario average case scenario this is something which we called as theta big o omega and theta so these are the three important scenarios that we have usually in our real life as well if you will observe if we if we face any sort of challenge any problem so that there also we are dealing with anyhow three situations either that situation is worst case or that may be the best case or that may be the average case right now let me ask you one question before i will move ahead let's try to correlate this concept with a real life practical scenario if suppose you face any problem in your life okay now it depends that whether that problem is very worst or it's kind of best case or it's kind of a worst case or it's kind of a average case which particular scenario will suggest that whether the person is good or bad just try to focus on my question which scenario will tell us that okay that this person is good this person is bad how what are the parameters obviously you will respond to me that ma'am whenever uh, we are dealing with any worst case scenario at that point of time uh, those people who are with me will be the one which are dear and near ones right similar goes for this code as well the code says or the algorithm says that i'll always try to see that what is the worst case scenario the meaning in case of algorithm by saying worst case scenario is that that the value of n where n is the size of an array n is the size of an array if this value of n is very large in that particular case how basically my code is responding what is the worst case scenario in that particular case that is something which we always curious to find out in an interview also whenever you go for an interview whenever you are writing any approach whenever you are uh, telling to the interviewer that this is a kind of algorithm that i am uh, looking for then he will always uh, specifically ask you that okay whatever you are thinking is may be correct or may not be correct but what do you think is the time complexity required to execute the code at that point of time you should be aware about these three complexities if he is not specifically mentioning that okay i want the best case or the average case or the worst case it means that you have to tell about the worst case scenario always think about this worst case scenario we want to 
optimize this worst case scenario or i would say we want to decrease the time complexity as much as we can in our code to execute or to run the proper output that is the overall idea or the concept behind the big o notation very very important concept in our algorithm session you will see in the future classes as well that whenever i am telling you any approach whenever i am trying to write any kind of code i am always after writing the code will talk about the analysis so at that point of time you should be aware of that what is the time complexity required to write the code whatever we have written and in the upcoming videos you will see that we will discuss a separate uh, analysis part where we will see that how basically we can compute any time complexity portion given a code how basically we will be able to evaluate what is the bigger time complexity so the question is that what is this actually inference of all about it simply says that when you are increasing the size of your uh, input whenever you are increasing your size of an input how basically your time execution time is increasing for example let me take one simple example for example you are you are doing some summation code okay now when you are adding maybe 10 numbers or the when the value of n is equals to 10 you are saying to me that the time required to execute this code is suppose maybe 10 milliseconds but when i increase the size from n equals to 10 to maybe n is equals to 1000 on the same machine when i i am running the same code the time requirement got increased to maybe 1000 or maybe 100 milliseconds so what i am want to say is that that we will observe that whenever we are increasing increasing the size of the input the time is also increasing something like this in terms of graphical representation that when i am increasing the value of n and on y axis this is the time so this is increasing this is in a increasing fashion okay now obviously it depends on various factors suppose you are having you are not having any good machine at that point of time it might be the case that your machine is giving a higher value of milliseconds as comparable to other person machine which is having a high higher configuration so we need some approximation we need some parameter with the help of which we will be able to get an idea that what is the overall time complexity so that approximation that parameter is something which is called as asymptotic notations in algorithms three main things worst case best case and the average case and we will always try to find out that what is the time complexity required in worst case scenario why is that so i already talk about right now let's move ahead let's try to now get the sense of the mathematical idea behind these terms first of all in today's session we will talk just about the big o and the upcoming videos i'll i'll create separately for the omega and the theta so when i am i am talking about this big o notation when i am talking about this big o notation so what this represents in terms of mathematical concept so any function which is given as f of n is called as order of g of n only when only when there exist some number n some size n where it is c times g of n so this is something which is very important to be take care of this is the i would say mathematical intuition behind the big o notation okay now let me try to illustrate it further it says that for all n where the value of n is somewhere greater than e equal to n not the value of c is something which is a constant and is always greater than, greater than 0 and the value of n not is something which is always greater than equals to 1 these are the three important constraints that you should take care of very very important concept right these are these are the three important constraints that you have to take care of now let me try to explain this concept using a graphical representation so that you will be easily able to get the idea what i want to convey here for example 
here I am having two functions. So here suppose uh, there is one function. I will try to create one plot here. I hope I will be able to create it uh, in a nicer way. And then there is something which is c of n here. It's like much smoother rather than a straight line. I want to create here. But it's so what I can do is that uh, so uh, I think now we can create this. Now here if you will see suppose this is something which we called as f of n. This is something which is which we called as c of n. What I am saying is that that there exists some point where the value is n naught. Now after this point here if you will see the value of the c of n is always greater right it is having at the, at the upper upper side as comparable to the value of the f of n that's the mathematical idea behind the uh, big O notation here if you will see this value of n which we are talking about after this is always greater as comparable to the value of the n note. This constant c that we are talking about is always greater than 0. The value of n note which is the size at where the threshold is there after which the value is uh, c times g of n is greater. So this is not c of n, c times g of n, right? c times g of n. Let me try to give you one example with the help of which I am pretty sure that you will be able to get an idea. For example, here I am having the value of f of n is 5n and the value of g of n is another function which is equals to n. Now this is the problem statement. Can I say that here the value of f of n is equals to order of g of n? Can we say this? What do you think? Can we say that the value of f of n is big O of g of n? You will say only when, what is the meaning of this statement? Big O? The meaning is f of n should be less than equal to c times g of n at some threshold, right? c times g of n. That's what we have inferred here. Now, here let me write the values. 5n five, five which is less than equals to c times n. Now, what should be the value of c? Is there any constant which exists here for which the value or for which this equation will become true? You can say that yes, I can write some value c which is greater than or equal to 5. Because at that point of time when the value of c is greater than or equals to 5, this equation will be satisfied. And when this equation will be satisfied, at that point of time we can say that this f of n is big O of g of n. Right? So this is the simple meaning so whenever someone is saying that this function is order of this that function it simply indicates that mathematically this is what he wants to infer. Graphically this is what he wants to infer that there exists some threshold. So this is something which I am saying is the threshold size. This is something that I am saying is the threshold size after which the value of c times g of n is greater. Right? very very crucial so here we have seen the example number one let me try to discuss one another example so that the point that i want to clarify here is pretty much clear to everyone so let's talk about example number two here suppose let's take the vice versa case where the value of f of n is something which is equals to n and the value of g of n is something which is equals to 5n now if suppose I am saying that the value of f of n is big O of g of n, when can I say this? Or is this statement is true or not? Let's talk about that. Again, if the statement is true, at that point of time, f of n is less than equals to c times g of n. Again, n is less than equals to c times 5n. Now, can I have any value of c? for which this particular equation will be satisfied. Can I have any value of c for which this particular equation will be satisfied? Think over it. Any constant value I am talking about. Yes, 
if suppose i will write here the value of c as 1 by 5 which is uh, again a constant term right or any term which is i believe uh, will be giving anything lesser than this particular value 1 by 5 will be verified so here yes there exists some term so again i can say that it's true we can write it like this right now let's talk about some another, another example which will give me a a separate a beautiful insight about the big o notation example number 3 and see this very much carefully for example here i am saying that the value of f of n is n square and the value of g of n is equals to n for this example first of all try to solve it on your own pause the video and then do let me know are you getting the correct result or not after that only unpause the video and verify that is your result is correct or not so here when can we say that f of n is order of g of n when again the value of f of n is less than equals to c times g of n it means the value of n square is less than equals to c times n now what value of c should i put here so that this particular condition will be satisfied so that this particular condition will become true so here if you will see if i will write the value of c as equals to n right at that point of time i can say that this condition will be satisfied so can i say that okay this is true because there exists some c value but this is wrong why is that so why is that so think over it the important thing here to see is that that this c if you remember in the definition itself i told you is something which is a constant but is this c is a constant is this c is a constant no this c is directly proportional to the value of n it means as the value of n will grow the value of c will also grow which is not actually the definition or the mathematical intuition of big o here c should be constant in above cases the value of c is what we are getting as a constant term but here we are seeing that this value of c is dependent on some other variable which is n and that too directly proportional means if we are growing the size of the value of n automatically the value of the c is also growing so that's why that's why it's not true it is false it is false very important concept of bigu so i hope that with these three examples itself you will be clearly able to get the picture that what is the meaning of big o notation right so what we have studied in this particular session we have started our concept of asymptotic notation where we have seen that there are three important parameters that we have in order to see the time and space complexity what is time and space complexity to examine the execution time to examine that how much extra space is required in the code now first one is the worst case which is represented by big o second one is the best case which is represented by omega third one is the average case which is represent, represented by theta basically given any uh, multiple solutions for a problem these are the important factors specifically i am saying about the worst case scenario which will determine that which particular solution is working the best here we have seen that what is specifically a big o notation because that's the main focus in all our course so we have seen what's the mathematical intuition behind big o notation this is something where i am saying f of n less than equals to c times g of n right here we picked up three important examples to basically uh, understand the above definition and we have seen this definition as a graphical representation as well as a graphical representation as well right so with this i would like to end this particular session if you still have any sort of doubt do let me know uh, i hope that the concepts 
whatever i am teaching here is pretty much clear to everyone right happy learning to all see you soon in the next upcoming session where now we will talk about the remaining two uh, omega and the theta uh, scenarios in the asymptotic notations bye bye everyone happy learning